Hey guys, it's Elizabeth from erwplans.com on Etsy, erw.etsy.com on Instagram, erw underscore plans, and on Patreon, patreon.com slash erwplans. Today, we are going to be doing a watercolor rainbow spread in your passion planner. Now to start, there's just a few uh, caveats. I will not be doing the full planner spread today um, with, this, with all the stickers and everything because um, I waited till the last minute to place my order with Chelsea's store. So they're not here yet. Note, if you need something for the first of the month, don't wait until the 10th of the month before to place your order. Just, you know, and I know this, I'm a shop owner. I know you're not supposed to like wait till the last minute for a shop that has a one to two week shipping time like hers does, like mine does. But I waited till the last minute because just how my life's been going. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, uh, so we're just gonna do, we're gonna get all the way up to the point where we would normally put in the timeline stickers and then I'm gonna leave those blank uh, you can go to the Instagram page and you will see what the finished thing looks like. Because once this has dried, I'll probably give it about 24 hours to dry. Hopefully, the stickers are on their way, so hopefully I'll have them by then. Uh, next, let's talk about the tools we'll be using today. I want to say, as always, my Westcott ruler, my super thin ruler that I love so much and I've actually dented because I've been using it since I was doing a bullet journal, so that's five or six years now. I mean, this thing is very sturdy. Love this thing. Uh, we will be using mechanical pencil and our slice tool. I have three different um, watercolor brushes over here. I have assortment of watercolors. So I haven't really decided what I'm gonna do with the watercolors yet. Some never sticks for very long washi tape. You know what I'm talking about. There's that, you get that washi tape that pulls up within a week, like you're pushing it down constantly while you're using it. This, that's the type of washi tape we're using. The rainbow palette from Chelsea's shop. And then these are just a variety of stickers. Um, I did a spread a couple weeks ago where I just tried to use up all these extra stickers from various kits that I've done, that Chelsea's done, um, various shops that I've purchased from, you know. And I have them all in my little sticker stash book here. And yeah, we're gonna use some of those today. And then I've got a mug of water here and I've got some binder clips. So all the links for everything that we're using are in the description. So if you see anything and you're like, ooh, I. I need that in my life. Description um, will give you the links to purchase. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're going to prep our page for the week. Um, before I do anything else, I'm gonna mask out with my kind of crappy washi the areas that I don't want to get paint on. So if I'm not, if I don't want paint on them, they're getting masked out right now. And this doesn't have to be perfect, it's just for the perfectionists out there. The thing that you're really concerned about is the areas that you don't want, the areas you don't want to have paint on, those are the ones that you wanna kind of take care of when you're doing this part. See, it's that kind of washi tape, the washi tape that just doesn't stick. That's what we're working with today. All right, so I'm just following the black lines on mine. However, if you want to be creative with yours, you can always do that. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna make some very deliberate cuts. Um, I don't know. Last time I did a watercolor spread, I went down the seam. I don't think I'll do that today. 
I changed my mind in the middle of the process. That's just how I roll. It's a little easier if I do it upside down like I usually do. And just kind of keep in mind wherever you don't have washi tape, there will be um, paint. You could even washi tape down paper over this like large area here if you didn't want that to get painted. Just something to keep in mind. Here's one where I will use my slice tool. And we'll just go ahead, slice this. I'm actually not particularly concerned if these get paint on them. In fact, I thought about painting over that whole area. And I'm going to do that. I think I might. Oh, I'm so indecisive. Yeah, I'm going to just paint over that whole area. So we're just going to grab our slice tool and our ruler. And just say, okay. I say, okay. Just call me Sven. I say, okay. All right, not that that's a fear and loathing joke. If you're not familiar. All right, but I say, okay, we're going to do it this way. And then we're just going to peel up that washi tape. I, what I'm doing, um, I'm shaking a little bit. I haven't had either. I had too much coffee or I haven't had enough. I'm not really sure yet. Um, it's, it's morning you know I like to keep the lines nice and sharp because like I said that's going to be kind of where your paint lines are not kind of that is where your paint lines are going to be so try to keep that sharp so you don't get too many like runny bits move this out of the way And again, down here, I'm gonna make a hard border here so that it won't, there won't be color down past a certain point. And honestly, it, it shouldn't come down this far. I'm just kind of doing these borders, this area here. But I like to really make sure that if I came down further than I intended to, nothing's going to get painted that I don't want to have painted. Okay. So this is just kind of an insurance policy, so to speak, I guess you could say. Nothing, no big deal. And if you had, like I masked off the date, if you don't care about having the date showing, you wouldn't have to mask that off. Or if you're gonna use like sticker, like the redating kit type stickers, you don't have to mask it off. All right. And one more, oh. I absolutely hate this washi tape. You didn't catch that, it kind of split on me. That just drives me freaking crazy, so yeah. But the roll's almost gone, so that that's the good thing. So we don't have to be too precious down at the bottom here. Okay. Beautiful. Um, the last thing I'm gonna do to prep oh. I was saying about up here, if up here, which mine, I just realized this looks a little crooked, so I'm going to even it up. Up here, if um, it, 
if uh, you have stickers, I don't remember if I said this already, I think I stopped talking because I got frustrated with my washi. If you have stickers to go over the date, obviously you wouldn't have to mask out the date. You know what? I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger instead of trying to. It's it's ever so slightly crooked. It's something that would usually really bother me. Um, but I'm trying not to be bothered by it. However, it is bothering me. So, um, yeah. So. As always, you want to be careful when you're doing the washi. You especially want to be careful with it for this, that you don't cut through your paper because that will lead to bleeding through. So, um, the last thing I'm going to do to prepare my page, I'll start. All right. The last thing you're going to do to prepare your page, it's going to flip over to the back side, put in a sheet of paper. That way, if it bleeds through this page, it shouldn't, but I haven't done a, one in this passion planner this year, this year's planner. Um, so that way it doesn't bleed through. I'm also going to tape down my edges here to that extra sheet of paper. And since I'm not washing or painting the bottom. I'll try to do that real close to the edge there. So I tape that down. Now I have a kit on the back side of this page here and a full page sticker on the back side of this page here. So I'm not super worried about it curling up on me. Uh, if when you get paper wet, it will curl up on you. Just you didn't know that yeah you do um but i still even though it won't it shouldn't curl up because it has my, one, my stickers on the back mine are waterproof so even though it has waterproof stickers on the back that should keep it from curling i'm still taping down as much as i can this will to the uh safety paper so to speak to try to keep it from curling just in case. And that's also what the binder clips are going to be for. Okay. Ew. It didn't go down all the way. Be careful with that one. All right. So then we're going to put in our binder clips also to kind of keep things in place. If you do them in the top area, like up here, what I would recommend, which is what I'm going to recommend, um, the curls, the paper will curl when it dries. So what I'm going to do and what I would recommend that you do is uh, don't put your paper clips down if you're going all the way to the edge with this, like I am. I'm going to go all the way at the edge with, of my paper with this. Don't put your clips down until you've painted to the edge and then you can clip to where the washi is, okay, if that makes sense. So, next thing we're going to do is paint to start our painting. Um, I am doing this paint uh, here with uh, as a rainbow, but you don't have to, I mean, you, you can do whatever you want. Uh, there's a, I'm going to have a video later in the year that shows you a simpler I shouldn't say simpler, just more of a design sort of thing going on. I have a, uh, there's a video on the page on my channel where you can see me do a Bioshock themed wa uh, watercolors. Uh, there's a, there's one, I, th I don't think I've made a video of it. I did a uh, St. Louis watercolors a few years back. So, you know. Um, the, it depends on how much color you want, how you do this. Um, the recommended way to do it is get is put like a drop of water in these paints, wait until they get kind of mushy, and then go ahead. Um, essentially, 
I'm just going to, I'm going for a brighter color payoff that's going to kind of fade out as we go down. As you can see, the paper starts to curl. Because I have those big stickers on the back, it's not going to curl all the way up. Okay. And then I will clip it down once I get done with this first section. So we'll go into my orange. And another thing to keep in mind, the wetter you make your paint, the water your, your paint is rather, wetter it is, uh, however you want to say that, the more likely it is that your paper and your will curl up. When I'm painting with watercolor, I try to pull the darker color into the lighter color like this so you get this kind of blending effect. Um, but because I'm on this uh, passion planner paper and I didn't want it to get too wet, then it's not getting enough water to really blend as much as I would have wanted it to. Um, so we'll just do this and then I'll just go through and try to blend it a little bit more. So we have a little ombre effect thing going on. Okay, and then I wanna clip that corner down. I'm clipping it right over the washi. So that'll hold that up. And then we can move on to the yellow. And at this point, I'm done going down my page, so I can just kind of leave that. And then we blend them together here. Pull, 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 pull to blend. And it goes a lot faster once you've gotten through here. So pull, pull, pull. Make sure I go down to my washi. And this one we're going to pull from this side, pull, pull, pull into the green, just to blend it. Okay. Bluish color here, like denim blue almost. We need that to be a little bluer. Pull, pull, pull. this up so it doesn't bleed through the paper on the back. here. Blend with the purple. Make sure you don't overwork your paper. And then top down. Okay. That's basically it. Then I'm going to grab my clip. Clip it over the washi so it's not hurting the paint. And I'm just going to leave that to dry. If I had any area where I wanted to do a darker color, I would go in there and do that now. I have these metallic paints. Um, by themselves, they kind of look a little grayish. If I wanted to do a metallic wash over anything, like over the top, this would be the time to go in and do it before it dries. But I'm pretty happy with this very watercolory look. Um, if you see any place that it looks like you could use more paint, go in and paint that um but yeah now we're just gonna leave that to dry maybe for about five minutes 
Um, if you wanted to do anything, any coloring in down here, you could also do that at this point. Um, but I think my plan was to leave this blank because I'm going to draw in things here. So I think I'm just going to leave this for now until it dries. And like I said, it take about five minutes of cleanup. Okay, after five minutes, and I can kind of see here that the edge is dry, I'm just going to start taking up my washi tape. Clips will come off. As you can see, I've got this really nice, crisp, straight edge, except for right there where I messed up my washi tape. And if it that, if something like that is gonna bother you, fix it. I'm gonna just, I'll sticker, I'll put a sticker there. And you'll never know. Like I said before, a um, couple of things. If I wanted this color, these colors to be brighter, um, if I wanted it blended better, I could go over with a second coat of either the metallic or the regular watercolors. One thing to note is you do not want to overwork your paper. If your paper starts to pill, you've overworked it. It's now bleeding into the paper. But as you can see here, I didn't get any bleed through on the edge. You cannot see where the color is here. And this is all painted under this whole Sunday here that's all paint. Did not bleed through there. Did not bleed through here. You can just see where my brush touched the edge of it there because I didn't have it all my my safety paper all the way to the edge. Um, something I didn't mention when we were doing the setup is that something I would recommend if you have them, if you have the writing boards, like I recommend getting for the daily. If you, I recommend getting these things called writing boards for the Passion Planner daily to kind of help you um, when you're writing after like a couple of weeks, it starts to get really thick and chunky with stickers. You get, uh, it's called a Shoji writing board and you get those and it'll keep, it'll help you have a flat surface to continue to write on or a pencil board is another name for them. They do have them in the B5 size, which is the medium. I believe they have them in the A5 size, which is the large, or the A4 size, which is the large. I would, instead of using paper, if you're, a bit nervous about bleed through or you want something to really make sure this doesn't curl up, put the writing board inside and clip it and tape it to your writing board. That will do that. Um, so now all that's really left to do is sticker. I'm gonna start with stickers from Chelsea's shop here. This is the rainbow kit. She used to have a section for rainbow. I don't think she has it as a separate section anymore. I could be wrong. I will double check that. I will fact check myself. I think it's just in the multicolor section now. I'm just gonna go ahead. Sticker over all of these. And I guess in retrospect, I could have done a rainbow all the way down here instead of doing it the way I did it. I like that it kind of just fades out into like a pink and a peachy color on there. Which I don't know if you can see that on camera. This is like a really light peach down here and this is like a pink. I know it's pretty light. Anyway, get all Chelsea's stickers on here. Like that. And then when the rest of my kit comes in that I delayed in ordering, I will do the coordinating uh, timeline colors going straight down like that. But in the meantime, if there's any stickers, like happy planner stickers that you want to put on, anything like that, that's the time you can add them into your columns. Also, if you have stickers for the bottom, this is a misprint sticker. If you can't tell uh, the 
cutting machine went a little mad. And uh, yeah, cutting machine just went slightly insane. Uh, and I'm still not sure why. But I had a few usable ones. So while I couldn't give this to the customer that ordered it, I could keep it for myself. This is actually for Amplify Planner, this particular design here. But I thought, you know, I like that color. It looks cute. I can put it in my planner. Um, I'm going to draw in a habit tracker here. I think that was my plan. And have room and try to leave some room for a uh, picture. Or I can draw in the space for the picture and not have the habit tracker, which is probably what I will end up doing. I'll just make a straight line here from the base of this sticker. as my bottom and then I'll go say three from there call this my end point call this my end point here and then I'll try to go straight up well, I'll go straight across from the top here and then from here, trying to line it up to be as straight as possible. There. I don't care that it's a little wiggly in the middle. What I care about is that it matches here. I can do it three inch, and one inch. Then we'll come back over here, connect the dots. Oh, eight. I went to two inch here. Two inches. Started connecting the dots. So that's fine. Two inch and two inch here. This line will make nice and dark. And then over here, two inch at our dot. Two inch on our line there. And then we don't have to worry about it being wiggly. Do it nice and dark from the line down to there. And then line to line. Connect the dots. Voila, that's where my picture will go. And then if I want to do a habit tracker in there, I can line it up with this line over here. Keep it straight. Okay. Straight as possible, that is. When the paper moves up a little bit, it can get a little wibbly wobbly. All right. Fix those lines a bit. straight up again connect the dots that we had at the bottom there and then I have a guideline I can put in here again connect the dots I had earlier the guideline in here and then we just go over line this up with the eight on my guideline which is here that's a little off. Guideline here. Erase the jacked up line. John's gone. And then line it up from the eight. And that's Sunday, Saturday, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday. Tuesday and Monday, double check, one, two, three, four, six, seven, perfect. Do the same up top. Up with the eight. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Make our little lines. We'll do it in pencil so we can essentially check our work before we ink it in. And then this edge here, we'll figure out how many habits we can feasibly track. One, two, three, four, five, and then what I can do is I can use one of my stickers over that infinite possibility space uh, to um, start the top here. So that it's right onable. I can do that. And then we'll just line those in with our Micron 01. And that will be our habit tracker. And I'm going to just leave that blank because that is going to be my um, photo space. Just line it down. Connect the dots. And I noticed my line was skipping a little bit, which happens because, as I mentioned earlier with this rule, I've actually cut into it with the X-Acto knife in the past. So it's got little dents, tiny, I mean, I want to say not microscopic, but like really tiny dents, but it still means that my markers can get caught in them and then skip. I'm just trying to do it upside down like that so I can see if when my markers skip, it's just, this is really hard to hold my roller like this. All right. Give that a second to dry. Erase my lines in one direction. You should pull down from the center of the paper when you're erasing your lines. And I'll leave this space for my photo. 
and then pull across. Actually, I should be pulling from the center of the paper, like so. All right. And then all I have to do, I'm gonna re do this. Actually, I don't even I don't have to do these lines in because it's just gonna be a picture. This is just to let me know where I can and can't go. Like that. My picture will go there. I could put a quote over here and then I can just sticker this all I want. The last thing I'm gonna do is divide my task list like I usually do. And I'm gonna be a little crazy and just do it with the marker directly. This is the medium, so four and four and a half is the center point for if you're measuring from the edge here. So four and four and a half, just the tiniest little dots. And then connect my dots. Make sure to skip where there's that little bit there, to a little kind of dividing line. Lift the roller, don't slide the roller. That's how you get um, ink marks where the ink hasn't fully dried yet. Right. Lift, don't slide. Do the same thing on the other side. and connect the dots. Lift, don't slide. I'm gonna try to show you from that angle, but that doesn't really work. Connect the dots. And then I can go, once my stickers get in, I can go pretty crazy with stickering. Uh, otherwise, if I need to time block something, I have my collection of leftover stickers. I could use the glitter. I think that would look cute. Um, I also have these colorful ones left over from one of Chelsea's kits. That would look very cute as well. This one would look fine as well. So at that point, it's just a matter of personal preference, how you're going to sticker those in. But otherwise, that is my spread. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, please leave a comment, and please share it with your friends. We go live on Wednesdays at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. Uh, sometimes, however, we do go a little late. So the best way to find out when a new video has launched is to subscribe to the channel. That way you'll get notified if we're running a little late with getting the show on the road or if we have a um, live that was unscheduled. Um, as always, thanks again so much for watching. If you enjoyed, also please consider becoming a patron. Uh, when you become a patron, you help keep these videos going with new product and uh, better lighting and audio equipment. Once again, thank you so much for watching, guys, and stick around for the next video.